Hello everyone. Last time we did the story of a Leaf Star Seeker, and quite a lot of you suggested we talked about another member of our team. Dashing, daring, a dishy dreamboat with a disposition for danger. I'm speaking, of course, of the rather dazzling Reno Jackson, probationary member of the League of Explorers and treasure hunter extraordinaire. <laughs> Although he can find it difficult telling the difference between valuable, irreplaceable artifacts and the more shiny treasures, his heart is definitely in the right place and he wants to prove his place in the League of Explorers. That League of Explorers is a group of intrepid adventurers who seek to preserve the artifacts and uncover the secrets of Azeroth. Its members include the notorious Bram Bronzebeard, the mastermind that is the least star seeker and the debonair Sir Finley Murgleton. Reno is currently on probation for bad behavior. We don't know exactly what this bad behavior was, but it's widely encouraged to check all artifacts retrieved with Reno that they are properly accounted for upon your return. We're gonna be rich! Prove to be almost a complete antithesis to fellow explorer Elise. Reno is the majestic Mustachios Maverick that dives headfirst into adventure with fearless glee. He seeks out adventure, exploration, escapades, hoping to come away with a bag full of treasure and some outlandish stories. Despite saying that Reno has the self-control of a magpie, at least she was inspired by his impulsive nature and he taught her that blazing her own trail is a lot more fun than following someone else's. Though Reno would consider that he always blazes his own trail, that might not be completely true. To him, the world is a stage and he is the fearless explorer in the spotlights, or at least that's who he wants to be. He introduced himself as a world-renowned archaeologist, explorer and treasure hunter. And he has a few stories he's always happy to tell to eager and most often not so eager listeners. So, should I ever tell you about the time I infiltrated the ogres of Dire Mall in disguise? Yes? Well, how about sneaking through the Blackrock Lyceum to acquire... Yes. Well, they really are extraordinarily daring and witty. Even when you hear them for the hundredth time, just ask Sir Finley. Reno plays the part of the dashing, daring, brave explorer that he wants to be. And after he and his companions defeat Sun Raider Ferrix in the vault of the Temple of Orses, he exclaims aloud, Ha <laughs> ha! I've got the run! If only Harrison could see me now! And this refers to his rival and inspiration, the one and only Harrison Jones. Reno is not all about his stories, however, as he always wants to appear the part of a rugged treasure hunter, and he's the four-time winner of the Best Accessorized Explorer Awards. He carries with him a lucky hat. He has a crafty lasso and a magical torch, because if Harrison Jones can wear a hat and carry a torch, then Reno can wear a hat and carry a torch way better than he can. Appearance is something that he takes great pride in, as even when we see him enjoying a hot tub with Sir Finley and a cow in that One Night in Carazon trailer, he's still wearing an amulet of the Golden Monkey. So our first encounter with the one and only Reno, that's in the Hall of Explorers, as Elise Starseeker tells us of her new discovery, the three fragments of an ancient titan relic called the Staff of Origination. Imagine, Explorer, the Rod of the Sun. Ho oh, oh, ho, it's worth thousands! Well, it's not the motivation that Elise was looking for. He certainly makes for an able-bodied adventurer, up to the task of securing the first piece, the Rod of the Sun, to be found in the ancient Temple of Orsus. And that's where we meet up with him. While he is determined on the task at hand, Reno can easily be swayed with the promise of other lucrative treasures. And as we join him, Elise tells us with an air of resigned exasperation that Reno, he could not resist his magpie-like tendencies and run across the room to rub a shiny lamp in an optimistic hope that a genie would emerge. Unfortunately for Reno and his unlucky companion, it wasn't exactly a genie that emerged from the lamp, but rather a djinn by the name of Zinar, who, it would appear, had been trapped inside the lamp for some time now. To get Zinar back into this lamp, Reno and his new friends would need to beat the fine djinn into submission. A battle ensued, and despite Reno trying to regale everyone with his stories mid-battle, it was a battle that was won, sending Zinar back into the lamp. With that little diversion out of the way, Reno and his companion, they could get back to the task set before them, getting their hands on that rod of the sun. Pressing on to the temple vault, a nasty surprise awaits them. A Tolvir named Sun Raider Ferrix, he has stolen the rod for himself and he won't give it up without a fight. Again, after a hard fought battle, they collect what they came for. They possess the rod of the sun. Unfortunately for them, almost as soon as they claim their new prize, a rumbling noise disturbs them. All around them, the temple starts to collapse and they need to escape, running like their lives depend on it, which they almost certainly do. 
As his brave companion presses on, Rino, despite the risk of imminent death, he can't help but get distracted by the thrill of adventure as they escape. Seeming to have no concept of danger, he takes a detour through a glowing pool before coming upon a pit of grim-looking spikes. As the pair escapes the spikes, luck is still not on their side. Reno is the first to notice that a giant boulder is rolling towards them. Although this does shake his resolve for a second, he's quickly back to his magpie-like obsession for treasure when he sees a giant statue with a particularly shiny ruby. Almost without thinking, Reno disturbs the statue. With a giant boulder threatening to flat them, a collapsing temple around them, and now an agitated statue on their trail, the pair, they need to struggle against constant obstacles as they fight for their lives. Almost there. I can see the sun. After coming across even more agitated statues and even giant bugs, Reno and his companion, they finally escape with their lives. And most importantly, they hold the rod of the sun. With the first piece collected, Elise then sends out Bren for the second part and Sir Finley for the third, each facing their own perils along the way. Although all members of the League, they come back with their respective pieces. They can't relax just yet. Upon completing the staff, a powerful curse, it allows an Ethereal, the Archfever Farm, to break through the wards of the House of Explorers, and he takes the treasures for himself. With the whole crew gathered, they battle the farm and their precious artifacts under his control. For Reno, who's no doubt already picturing himself boasting to Harrison Jones about his latest feat of unfathomable bravery, the feat is not an option for the good guys. <laughs> And he would prove to be correct. And with Rafam defeated, the staff is put on display within the Hall of Explorers. With the staff recovered, the members of the League, they set about on their own. Elise, she went traveling into Anguro Crater to look for adventure. And Reno, he was last seen exploring near the Dalaran Crater. Heroes never tend to get much rest. And Elise soon finds out that Rafam is once again up to no good. This time, he sets his mind on a much larger target. The floating citadel of Dalaran. With the League spread around the world, Elise goes on to track Reno down to call on his aid. Unfortunately for Elise though, Reno is still as treasure obsessed as ever, and when he finds a gathering wand, he decides that, with a little practice, he could basically be just like Medivh. To get his attention and his help, Elise is forced to knock some sense into Reno, who is fixated on his new and very dangerous toy. And as it turns out, trying to use an unwieldy and powerful weapon with no knowledge of how it works, it leads to some unintended consequences, and Elise must now battle through an increasingly powerful wand in the hands of Reno, who, despite his claims, is basically nothing like Medivh. I have an idea. Practice against the League of Evil. Oh, yes! Who are they again? With our dashing explorer on board, there's no time to waste. A plague of fire, madness, and even murlocs. It has come from Uldum, and Elise has tracked down the sources. Reno still intends on being a mage. He's renamed himself to Reno the Relicologist, and armed with his gathering wand, he is ready to explore the first source, the lost city of the Tolvir. With Finley handing him his hat and his whip, Reno is ready to tackle the city head on. And of course, he wouldn't say no to stocking up some treasures while he's down there. That's where the latest adventure will take you, which is still being released. Together with Reno, you get to take on brand new challenges, combining the guile and combo of a rogue with the powerful abilities of a mage. Elise, this thing's a giant! How can we hope to defeat it? The first chapter is free to try out, but the rest of the adventure you'll have to buy. Trust me, we're not sponsored here, just putting it out there. A brand new adventure is waiting to be explored. And that's where the story of Reno ends for the moment. Next time, we'll take a look at a very old requested topic, the story of the ancients. But if you're like, hey, Noble, I have suggestions, I got topics, I got cars that you could cover in the future, by all means, let me know in the comments down below. You could also subscribe if you like my videos, perhaps even leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time, see ya!